You see this gathering meditation from Isaiah, the ninth chapter, first through the fourth verse. When voluminous darkness descends and plods the earth, and your eyesight adjusts too comfortably to the dimness of sin, and your soul gropes wildly as if blind to righteousness, when petrified darkness paints your face with moral decay, and people tell you you've changed, and you realize that you can't will yourself into doing better. When smothering darkness attempts to strangle the twinkle in the stars and chokes any hope in the future and suffocate the last vestige of breath from your dreams, when it appears that the shadowy side of life has triumphed, remember the words of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Let us stand as we sing, angels we have heard on high.
join me in the entry into celebration. The impossible is about to happen in a stable. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. This is the evening when creation stood still and held its breath. For God was doing the most unbelievable, dangerous thing. This is the evening when God embraced humanity from the inside and from the birth of death. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. Welcome, Easter Hill family and friends and online worshipers. We want to extend a special welcome to our visitors tonight. On behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Dale Witherspoon and Easter Hills church family, we bid you welcome. Now, will you please join me in the call to worship. Glory to God in the highest. And hope to every spirit's heart. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to every conflicted soul. Glory to God in the highest. And joy to every Glory to God in the highest. And in love to everyone. Let us sing praises to our God. Let us offer his light against the darkness. Amen. Amen. The Christmas Eve candle lighting liturgy will be done by Jasmine Haynes and William Haynes. Good evening, church. <clears throat> we have heard the call to keep watch, but what are we keeping watch over? Maybe we're looking for something that will define us, something that will remake us, transform us, some relationships, some hope, some love that will make us new. Maybe we're looking for the gift we remember this night. together 
What we go out to see in the middle of our world is not necessarily the Christ child or the light that glows within. No, I think that we watch over is the world that he came to save. The masses of humanity who think they can find salvation in the stuff of this life, like we know we do sometimes. When we forget, a world that has room for a savior, even when we've forgotten. And part of what we're keeping watch for is to see whether we can make room. Room for grace, room for joy, room for peace. Even at our worst, at our most needy and most helpful and grace-filled. Keep watch. Let us light these candles and complete this circle as we rejoice in the light that shines in the darkness and declare with joy and with hope. Thank you. Joy to the world. The Lord is coming. you have any children here this evening? I want to invite them to come down. Do you have any children? All right. Well, we got the big children. What did Reverend Phil say? Yes, I'm here. Praise God. Praise God. We've had a guest that's been with us in the past named Sam Kaufman. And Sam is a storyteller. And Sam has written this story titled The Little Star. And it can be found on Amazon and Spotify and uh, iHeartRadio. I want to share this story with you this evening. Once upon a time, once upon God time, God the Creator called all the angels and stars of heaven together to tell them exciting news. Soon God's son, Jesus, Savior of the world, would be born in David's city, Bethlehem. Then God, the creator, 
asked the angels and the stars if they would like to bring a gift to Jesus on the night of his birth. All the angels and stars said, yes. Then they left God, the creator, to think about their gifts and anxiously waited to hear that Jesus had been born in Bethlehem. That night, all the stars of heaven talked excitedly about their gifts. The big star was quick to tell the other stars that because he was, after all, the biggest and strongest star, he would give Jesus his strength because he knew Jesus would need strength to complete his mission on earth. All the stars of heaven thought this was a wonderful gift. The very next night, the brightest star announced he would give Jesus his light so he could reflect the light of the world. All the stars of heaven thought this too was a wonderful gift. A week later, the silver star, who had a beautiful singing voice, said she would give Jesus a lullaby. And when the stars of heaven heard her lullaby, they knew this was a wonderful gift. As the weeks passed and the stars of heaven talked each night about their gifts, the little star became sadder and sadder. Every morning, the little star would go to his little corner of heaven and sigh because he had no gift to give to Jesus. And every evening, when the stars of heaven gathered, his light became harder and harder to see. The more the little star thought about a gift for Jesus, the more he sighed and wished he had never agreed to bring a gift to Jesus. He even began to dread the night Jesus would be born because he felt so ashamed. He sighed again, and tears ran down his cheeks. The other stars of heaven were so excited preparing their gifts, they didn't notice the tears and sighs of the little star. At last, the night of Jesus' birth arrived. God, the creator, called all the angels and stars of heaven together to present their gifts. But the little star stayed in his corner of heaven. He was too embarrassed to admit he had no gift. And besides sighing again, he thought to himself, no one will miss one little star. The biggest star gave his strength to Jesus, and God the Creator thought this was a wonderful gift. The bright star gave Jesus his light and God the Creator was very pleased. And when the silver star sang her lullaby, God wept away a tear, wiped away a tear, because it was so beautiful. When all the angels and stars of heaven had given their gifts, God the Creator asked, Where is little star? And where is his gift? You see, the little star was right. In all the excitement, no one missed one little star. So God the Creator called for the little star, but the little star wouldn't answer. He thought he could hide, but he couldn't hide from God. Slowly, the little star stood before God the Creator with tears running down his cheeks. God looked at the little star and asked, Little star, why are you crying on this happiest of nights? And where is your gift? The little star could only sigh again. With love for the little star, God the Creator came and sat next, next to little star. Little star, please tell me why you are so sad. Through his sighs, the little star told God the Creator, he had no gift for Jesus. The angels and the stars of heaven gasped. How could this happen? God the creator quieted down the angels and the stars of heaven. God the creator asked, little star, do you love Jesus? 
Oh, yes, with all my heart. Then God, the creator, said, because of your love for my son, do you want to do something for Jesus? All of a sudden, the little star knew what his gift was. He wanted to show the world how to find Jesus. God, the creator, smiled because the gift of the little star came from love. And when the little star smiled back, his heart was so filled with love, he thought he might turn into sawdust right then and there. Suddenly, the little star felt himself get bigger and brighter as he started to rise up into the sky. Go now, little star, said God the creator gently. Lead the world to my son in Bethlehem. You are forever my Christmas star. And that is the story of Little Star. Amen.
Okay, Janelle. Luke 2, verses 1 through 20, the birth of Jesus Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria and all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city David called Bethlehem, because Joseph was a descendant from the house and family of David. Joseph went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for Mary to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. Mary wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for him in the guest room. Now in that same region, there were shepherds living in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid because I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in the bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly with the angel was a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth and peace among those whom he favors. When the angels left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made, know, has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made it known what had been told to them about this child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them, and Mary treasured all of these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word. Christmas is a special time of, of blessings. And sometimes unexpected things just happen, amen? amen? As we prepared to start the service, someone handed me an envelope saying it was from someone in the congregation. And so I went to the person and I said, do you want me to open this now or later? And he said, open it now. And so I did. And after I opened it and I read it, I went back to the person and I said, do you want me to share all of this? He said, just as it is. And so I am going to share this unexpected gift that took my breath away. It says to the Easter Hill United Methodist Church, in memory of Alfred J. Daniels, Jr. Here's a check for $27,000. $12,000 for Freedom School. Praise God, praise God. Our special offering is for Freedom School this evening. What a great start. <laughs> Praise God. And then for the scholarship funds, for Easter Hill, $5,000. For the United Methodist Men, $5,000. And for the Women of Faith, $5,000.
If my math is correct, that's $27,000. We love you all. Thank you for the 70 years at Easter Hill in the Little Brown House. God bless all of you, Thelma, S. Daniels, and family. Praise God. <laughs> Thelma, I want you to wave your hand and your family members just to stand up so we can acknowledge you. Yeah. Wave your hand, Thelma, thank you. We love you too, and I, I, I had a conversation with Thelma a few weeks ago, and she said, I'm gonna be at church for Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. And, and, and she, I said, well, you, you do all that you need to do to get yourself stronger so that you can be here, because we have missed you. Yeah. We have missed you, and we are glad to see you here this evening. That was a gift in itself, but thank you for your generosity. God bless, amen. amen. Sister Linda. It's offering time. It's offering time. Will the ushers please come forward? God of the stars and God's angel songs, as we gather this evening, all of our attention is focused on the baby, lying in the makeshift bed in a it will have to do stable. It's not lost on us that you sent your son, our savior, into the world among the poorest of the poor and told us, this will be a sign to you. As we present gifts to you, we pray that they might reach those in the greatest need, that they might lift those in the deepest despair, and that they might bring peace and compassion to those who find themselves amidst conflict. We pray this in the name of that holy child, Jesus, the Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Amen.
the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt his worth. A thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices oh night divine oh night when Christ was born oh night divine oh night oh night divine truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love, and his gospel is peace. Chain shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raising, let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord. Oh, praise his name forever. His power and glory forevermore proclaim. His power and glory Thanks to all of you. 
just give God thanks. For all the gifts that God gives to us. Some gifts are large and some are small and some are in between. But as we heard the star story, every gift matters to God. Every gift is important to God. Especially when we give those gifts in love and we give those gifts from our hearts. And so I thank each of you for being here this evening, giving of yourself, giving of your time. As the year comes to a close, thank you for giving a faithful service to the church. But more importantly, not giving just to the church, but giving to God, our creator, the one who loves us, the one who sustains us, the one who nurtures us. And as we prepare to receive Christ anew in our hearts, we're reminded this evening as we lit the Advent candles, as we've done these four weeks of Advent, the first candle was the candle of hope. And the second candle was the candle of peace. And the third candle, the pink candle, was the candle of joy. And last Sunday, we lit the candle of love. All those who lived before Jesus' birth were living in hope, wanted peace, wanted joy, wanted love. But it couldn't happen until Jesus Christ came into the world and he brought all of these gifts together. So as the ushers dim the lights, we're going to light the Christ candle, reminding us that Jesus is the light of the world. And Jesus came to share his light with the world and with each of us. And as I light the Christ candle, I'm going to... Uh, Come and light the candles on the end of the aisles that you might light your candle and then one another's. As just with the gifts that may be big or small, but they are huge when they're put together. When our little light shines, it might not be that bright, but when it gets put together with all the other lights, Oh, how bright the light of Christ shines in the world. So as we light one another's candles, we want to sing Silent Night. Please hold your candles upright so we don't spill any wax. Or burn down this church. We want the church to be on fire, but not in that way. God is good. Amen. And as you're able to stand as we sing together.
watching on live stream, just turn your flashlight on on your iPhone or your Google phone. Christmas. Merry Christmas. We have the lights back on. I ask you to blow out your candles and there's a basket in the back. As we depart, we can put the candles in that basket. As we leave this place, 
We go with hope. We go with peace. We go in joy. We go in love. Most of all, we go with Christ. Go be safe. Enjoy Christmas with your family, your friends. And give thanks to God for his son Jesus Christ who came into the world that we might have life and have it abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen.